Skuptash, Anyam Yapchigi Rubin Naranho, Anyam Chikshan Watamatikam, who can drill about them, Komskutu Walsik Tamamaji, Kukinya Ogapatkan, who I go to Watamatikam. Good day, my name is Rubin Naranho. I am from the city of Tucson, Arizona. Uh, my mom is from the community of Salz, Arizona, and my dad is from the other side, uh, which we call, which is Mexico. Um, first of all, before I uh, start my little demo here, um, I wanted to thank all of you who donated this Devil's Claw. I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, it's very valuable, uh, and it can it can bring uh, some. Uh, hefty prices for a big bundle of them when they're um, being sold for use as ba in basket making. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that as a basket weaver, we prefer the really long ones like these because they last longer versus the shorter ones, which don't last as long, meaning we have to stop and add another one, stop and add another one. These tend to last obviously much longer. So we do value those more although we still use the other ones that are slightly shorter. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to say also before I start doing my demo that there is another variety of Devil's Claw, which we call Bon Ihuka. This is called Ihuk in the, in the Anthem language. So Bon Ihuka means uh, Coyote Devil's Claw. And the reason they call it Coyote's Devil's Claw is because the oral tradition states that the coyote pissed on it and made it useless. It's often brittle and very short, and the way to uh, discern or um, know that it is a coyote's devil's claw is that it has a yellow flower versus the other variety, which has a purple, excuse me, lavender, whitish color uh, flower. Um, anyway, um, the way I start processing the devil's claw is I use a pruning shear to cut the devil's claw, claws off the pod. And then uh, usually I like to save the pods so that I can save the seeds. Um, often the seeds are, uh, are, are much, they're numerous. Uh, and what you can do with the excess seeds is um, um, sprout them. And like just like alfalfa uh, sprouts are sprouted in to use in salads and uh, dishes or whatever you like. Uh, it has a, it has, to me, it has a flavor of alfalfa sprouts. Uh, so that's another use for the seeds. Um, anyway, after I cut off the, the claws, I'll soak them in water for 24 hours. And historically and probably uh, a long time ago, the uh, what the autumn ladies would do is they would dig a shallow area on the ground and then fill it with sand and then they would press excuse me pour water over it and then they would uh, make a hole in the sand put the devil's claw in and then cover the the devil's claw up with sand let them hydrate overnight possibly maybe one or two days and then they would be removed and then the splitting process would start which i'm going to do right now um i'll take a claw and um with a sharp knife, I will begin at the right in the middle of this, at the end of the claw where it's been cut, and then I'll take my teeth, and then I will split, guiding the claw um, so that it separates evenly. That's a little, excuse me, that process is something that you'll have to work on, because if you don't split it evenly, it would, I'll show you what will happen. This is what happens if you don't split it evenly and you have to guide it with your fingers and your intuition and just by, by experience, that's what will happen. It's not split evenly because it wasn't guided. I'll do one more. Some devil's claw, every all devil's claw is different. There are some devil's claw that are really soft, and some of it's really hard. So you guide it with your fingers so that it splits evenly. 
So the next process I'm going to show is how I process this for weaving. I'll, I'll take the, the, the split devil's claw cock and I'll shave it and I'll usually use my thumb and I will focus on one area and I will take the inner bark off the claw. Oops, I went too hard on that. Once again, I use my finger. This claw is very, very hard. And often you have to stop and resharpen your knife. So I'm taking the outer bark off the claw, leaving the pithy inner um, material. One side is clean. Then I'll go back and split the other, I mean, clean the other, process the other. So now it's ready to use for weaving. It's soft and pliable. You can even turn, uh, uh, create a knot with it. That's how soft it is. I'll take my basket. Here's one that I've already started. And then I'll punch a hole at the very end of the coil. And I use a pair of uh, finger fingernail cutters and to make a nice sharp entry point on the devil's claw. And then I will introduce the devil's claw. This is going to leave a little bit more center entry point. Draw it through. This is a little tough, yeah. Oh, I went through too fast. Oh, this is being a little bit difficult right now. I'll reshape my point. Try it again. Draw it through. And then begin to weave it into the basket. So that's how I process the devil's cloth for use in basket making. Um, I thank you again for all the donation of the Devil's Claw that uh, uh, you provided to me. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Devil's Claw can be expensive, actually. A big ball of Devil's Claw can go for about $150, so it's very valuable. Uh, the other thing, too, I wanted to mention, too, is that if you're growing Devil's Claw and it's, you're, you're going to make it uh, uh, for basket, if you're going to grow it for basket making, is to when the devil's claw uh, is still on the plant and the tip is really hard and the way you can do that is you just use your finger and you take the tip and if it picks your finger pretty hard or sharp it's ready you can you can take it off the plant um, but while it's uh, slowly drying and turning black inside meaning the claw is turning or the claw and the pot is turning black um, we sprinkle wood ash over the devil's cloth so that it doesn't mold or grow bad. And that's just to absorb the moisture from the, uh, the green devil's cloth. It can also be left on the plant, though we like to keep them as black as we can get them. So a lot of us will store them in the dark, um, even, even after they've dried. Because if they've, they've been sitting out in the sun for a while, they turn gray and then they turn pretty much useless. They can still be used, 
actually what a lot of the women would do a long time ago, um, they would make parching baskets, uh, generally all out of devil's claw, because the devil's claw material is very, very hardy. It can stand up to a lot of uh, use, uh, heart heavy use. So they would weave a whole basket out of devil's claw. And what they would do is they, they would take coals and they would put it in a basket. Oh, excuse me, they would start with putting something like wheat or some kind of seed that was gonna be processed for uh, eating. Um, they would take, then they would put the claws in there and they would take it and they would just shift it back and forth, shaking it um, so that the claws, excuse me, so that the coals don't burn the basket and create, you know, uh, damage to the basket. Um, so that's my demonstration for today. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, um, you can, I will give uh, Sasha my email. Uh, feel free to contact me that way. Uh, or thank you very much and I appreciate the privilege the privilege of your time. Thank you.